Hey, it's Ebony Green living here, and I'm so excited because I am here today with Chrissy over at Raisin Joy Fitness. Hi, and Hannah. Hey, Hannah. Over at Pepper and Pine, and I wanted to just join them in why I chose Ward Off, and I am a little late to this collaboration, and that's okay um, because we are just starting with homeschooling this month of September, and um, this will be my first time using Ward Off curriculum. So although I have watched all of Hanya's videos and mostly um, Chrissy's as well and just lots of others and I even drove all the way to California, the side of the world, <laughs> to go to a live education conference, um, join Facebook groups and just ask lots and lots of questions, I had not actually put it into action yet, just observing and just soaking it all in. So now that I've been homeschooling um, about three weeks with Oak Meadow, I feel that I can just go ahead and um, talk more about why I chose Ward Off. So the real sweet, simple answer is my sons, and particularly my son Eli. Um, he is what sparked this, and I'll tell his story in a second. Um, and then after that, my oldest son asked me, he said, Mom, did you know about Ward Off when you um, first started homeschooling me? And I said, no, baby, I didn't. Why do you ask? He said, Oh, nothing, but I know if you knew about it, you would have used that with us. I was like, oh, because I didn't know about it, and, and I would have. And I asked him, I said, well, do you want to try Oak Meadow this year? And he said, yes. And I was like, okay. Thinking to myself, oh, my goodness, how am I going to do this? <laughs> um, but, but we were able to work it out, and so I have um, K, second and fifth grade curriculum, all Oak Meadow, and that's what we're using for this year. So why I chose Ward Off and how my story began, I was like struggling with my third son, Eli, and I was wondering how it would be possible to teach him at home like I did the other two. Everywhere we'd go, he'd be picking up rocks, leaves, dirt, etc., and I'd get so mad because he'd be messing up his clothes, he'd be messing up his shoes, and that's just not something I was used to or exposed to, right? And so to me, it was like, he's a little different. Um, because again, it was not something that I'm familiar with and I haven't experienced that. And I just kept wondering how could I teach him? And I kept praying for God um, to speak with me um, because if he didn't give me instructions, I felt like I would need to put him in public school because I just didn't feel that I had what it took um, to teach him. I'm just being honest here and just kind of sharing my journey and I hope that's okay. But meanwhile, I had been watching um, Pepper and Pine channel. In fact, I had been a subscriber for a long time. I watched every video and some of them a couple times. See, we're a low media home, so I don't watch a lot and I actually don't like allow my boys to watch a lot either. But her channel was something that we could watch together. And so while I was making lunch every day, because of where the TV used to be in the home, we would all go and sit on the couch and we would watch whatever she put out that day or the previous day. Um, and we would sit and we would watch her videos. And Eli would always, always, always ask to watch her videos. And he'd want to watch them over and over. And I mean, especially her chalk drawings, it would be back to back to back. I mean, like, he was just so in love with it. And we did this for over a year. And finally, a light went off, a light bulb actually went off in my head. Like, he's telling me how he wants to learn. He's telling me what he likes. And he's telling me. Um, am I just listening and putting it into action? And so I was like, okay, all right. He wants to be homeschooled and he needs to be homeschooled. Ward off. Well, I had heard a lot of things about ward off, a lot of negative things, um, particularly for my beliefs and particularly for my ethnicity. Um, but when I dug in deeper, I didn't see anything that was stopping me um, from continuing this path that I believe God set before me. Now, I will say we are not ward off purist, um, but we are ward off inspired, and we are using Oak Meadows um, this year. It's not that we won't use Live Ed or for softwares or anything else, but with Oak Meadows, I haven't found anything um, that goes against what I believe, and I haven't found anything to be offensive to me and my ethnicity. In fact, I love the fact that I could add my own ethnicity into it anywhere I like. You know, I'm a teacher, so I have that um, authority and that the ability to do that by making my peg dolls have a little extra brown in their skin and having darker hair and um, adding in some various histories or just adding in um, my religion throughout the program. 
but I loved Word Up because I love the holistic approach to caring for the children and teaching them. And really, I just wanted a gentle approach to discipline. I had tried my way. I tried what I knew. I tried what people said I should do, and it was not working for my son. It was not working for my third son. And so I knew that I needed to do something different. And I was desperate to find help and change, and by any means necessary, I was willing um, to do that. In fact, I hated the discipline that I received when I was growing up, so I was very much against that cycle at all costs. Um, a lot of people didn't like my, chi uh, my choice of homeschooling or maybe my method, um, maybe my gentle approach, etc. Um, but that's on them. Everyone doesn't have to agree with me, and everyone I'm sure doesn't agree with you either. But I will say that since I've turned to this type of um, method, I feel that I'm a better mom, I'm a better wife, and I'm a better manager of my home. And that's what really matters. So again, like I said, I watch all of Hannah's videos and others that are on this water off journey, um, Live in Tree House, and just, just so many more. Ivana over at Homeschool Blessings, even um, my girl JDA, she did a, a water off inspired table on her channel. So lots of, of channels, and I just kept watching and watching and just all of them. And again, I won't start calling them out because I don't want to leave any of them out because I watch pretty much all of them out there. And they all have something good to say or have all touched me in some type of way or another. But I do, um, I did attend again. So thank you all for sharing. So thank all of you out there who make videos about Word Off and just really inspire us with your journey. Um, there were some videos I saw on how to make it more affordable. Um, just so many good things. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate all of you guys. And I, when I went to California, because I live in Maryland, so I went all the way to California. And I do have videos there in case you want to see the videos of that. Um, I was able to really get a better inside look at what, you know, this really looked like and what this really was. And I got to experience it and the peace and the joy and the understanding that I received while I was there was amazing. It was life changing and no amount of money, even though I spent my whole month's paycheck, <laughs> could could equal up to what I received. What I received was truly priceless, although it was not priceless. It came with a pretty hefty tag. <laughs> um, with that being said, I'm already trying to figure out how I'm gonna go next year. And with that being said, I would encourage you guys, if you are thinking about starting your own journey, to check out what's local to you. There is a local um, Ward Art School of Baltimore near me, and I would go to every event they had. In fact, if you go back to the felt making video, a couple videos back, that was there. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see lots of activities and things that we things that we have done there at the school. So I really tried to immerse myself as much as possible by messaging you know some of these people that I was looking up to by going to the conferences by reading the books you know by watching the movies and by attending the local events um, I love the stories the handwork the gentleness the connections that you feel to everything I've learned to just reconnect and connect with my children in ways that I didn't even know was possible um, and this year, for example, I'm using, like I said, K2 and 5. And I think it's amazing how we're able to do our readings together at night. It's, a, it's an opportunity, it's a chance for us to really be together. And I'll tell you, like this week, we've been doing Jolly Robin for my second grader. We've been doing, um, you know, the like Peter Rabbit we did. And where do you think you're going, Christopher Columbus, with my fifth grader? But I mean, sitting there together as a family and just reading those stories out loud really just adds special touch and it really a special connection and bond is formed and like I said I have learned so much and I really can see a change in me I see a change in my home and most important just my whole home school you know I've improved my home management skills I noticed my third son's behavior has changed I feel less stressed because I set you know aside the time daily for me and for them 
for each one of us for our days of the week. And in another video, I'll be talking about our specials. Um, so every day, you know, we're doing something. So we know what we're doing for the day as far as special goes. Um, we know what morning chores, what a.m. chores, I mean, you know, p.m. chores. We know what's being expected. And I think when you, you know, what I need you to do during meal time. Um, what I need you to do when it's bedtime, you know, just when the children know it's expected of them, it's easier for them. Um, and this one is just like what happens at circle time. And this one is just the day to day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I just wrote it out and I can share more of these with you guys if you want to. And I do incorporate my faith even into our um, circles, but I want to share one more thing before you before I let you go. When I was in California with my baby, because I, I took my baby with me, I left the boys, but I took the baby because I nurse, and so we flew to California. I was in a room with the class, and in that class we were passing the ball, and um, my hand had the baby it was like a boom, 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 and what I I missed one class um, because the baby was like fussy or something. So I came into the class not knowing the information other people knew. And not that I felt like she assumed that I knew, but I had to learn that, right? And it was hard for me to learn without being given the instructions. And it was hard for me to just know what I was supposed to do without knowing because it was my first time and it was new to me. And that really, I was struggling internally, but I couldn't let it show outwardly because you know, I'm a big girl, right? And so I couldn't be like, oh, I'm upset and like start tossing stuff like kids can. But it was like, okay, yes, I have four balls in my hand right now and I'm only supposed to have one. But you know what? I'm gonna take my breath, I'm gonna take my time and I'm just gonna breathe. And what's happening here? What is the movement I should be doing and what is the movement that I am doing? And how can I get these balls back to the people? And in just a couple minutes, I was able to only have one ball and I was able to just go the rest of the class smoothly, um, smooth sailing it almost to the point where it was like I didn't even miss a beat. And so, um, but that showed me how sometimes I would do my children. I would just give them something and not even give them clear cut instructions with full details. I mean, even in a classroom, I saw adults, you know, asking for clear, precise details. How much more a child? So again, um, just going out there and, and being in nature and just being surrounded at the Santa Cruz Waterhouse School, which is amazing and beautiful. Such an amazing place. All the teachers there are amazing, amazing, amazing. Just lots of love for Santa Cruz. Um, it just changed my, my thinking pattern and my process, and it just helped me understand more them and that's what it's all about the connections that you have with them and when I can think about how does my child receive this and understand this and when I can really cater and tailor things to them and for them life is better for them and it's better for me so for me Ward Up has been a journey that has been life changing um, and I'm just so thankful that I was introduced to it when I was introduced to it and um, I would say challenge your assumptions about what you hear, what others say, and sometimes step out of that box and out of that circle and try to make your own path. And, you know, I always say something. I always say, chew the fish and spit out the bones. So even if there are some bones, just spit it out, right? Because that fish is still edible, right? Or in my case, since I'm vegan, you know, eat the watermelon and spit out the seeds, right? You're not going to throw the whole watermelon away because there's a few seeds in there. Because then you won't get the food and you need the food because the food is nutrients for you. But if you just spit out the seeds, you can just go ahead and enjoy that watermelon and it will be nourishment for you. So I would say for any method um, that you're using or for um, any situation where you feel there's some bones, spit out the bones and just chew the fish. So be sure to check out my playlist because I have a lot of things on um, Word Off. I have a lot of things on homeschooling, um, but I have things on large family. I'm going to have lots of videos upcoming on Minimist. Um, just check out my playlist. 
Give me some thumbs up, okay? Show me some love, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, blessings.